Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a demo for your stream that hasn't come for a little while, but it is coming through and hopefully is going to be a very, very interesting episode. Today, we're going to be having a look at Hades, uh, the most recent addition coming through over to the end side. We saw that he was sort of playing as a bit of a stand-in while Alu was taking a little bit of personal leave about a month ago. And a lot of results started going the way of Ents. We knew that as soon as he joined up with the team, they won loop at Season 9. Um, they had a pretty decent playoff uh, run all the way to 5th to 8th in the Funspark Season 2 event. And then even in uh, Funspark um, playoffs, the first playoffs, um, they actually won the entire event. I think they dropped like one map um, to Harvu. Uh, then they beat Hyenas. They beat K23. And then they beat Hyenas again in that grand final. They've just gone 3-0 in the Eliza Invitation. So really, everything is looking really, really up for Ents. Since he's joined the team, uh, we know that 17th of this month, the 17th of June, he actually got signed as a permanent fixture rather than just a stand-in for a month. And this is a player who hasn't had a massive amount of experience outside of the Polish team. We knew that he sort of started uh, very early into his career, having that trial period for, for AGO for about a month or so, then moved over to Aves, had a little bit of a stint there. And then when he kind of really made a name for himself, it was out on Viz the Krakow. Uh, he was able to have a couple of deep runs in sort of the summer of 2020 towards the back end of the year, being their star Orpa, being a very, very consistent element for the team. And then when he sort of stood down, everyone was a, a little bit surprised of, of what's going on there. But now we know exactly where he's been over to the end side and pushing them in the right direction. We're going to be focusing in on one game in particular, one map in particular. And this was in that Fun Spark playoff event. It was the first round. It was the upper bracket quarterfinal. I had the opportunity of actually being able to cast this match live. And I just realized straight away... I've got to do a review on this. I, I have to do a review on this. It went to three maps. Uh, there was a 16-0 into the mix that went to the way of Harvu, which is a very big surprise. But the map we're going to be focusing in on was Nuke. It was a 16-5 result. It was the last map of the best of three. And really, Hades just had a, an unbelievable map. Uh, he dropped 32 kills in 21 rounds. He put a 2.37 rating up. And just had so much impact. Great multi-fragging potential. A lot of opening jewels being taken. And I thought, what perfect opportunity to be able to not only cast the game live, but to actually be able to see this game go back over to review. And what better way to just jump straight into the game? Just explode upper from here. So Stappy just lining up the top of the roof out for a main smoke. How many players have they got at Squeak Doors? They got three players at Squeak Door. Deer looking to entry. Just trying to clear out that hard position to start off. Okay, so just straight away, just being able to work off the information, the, the way the deer falls, and then straight away, Hades gets that information relayed over, looks up towards top heart, but he already dies to the molly. And then just clearing out the site with his teammate, being able to oof, get a great shot towards the back of silos. Bomb not yet planted here for Ents. Harvu going quite quickly onto the retake. Another great tap up towards that heaven position. Now they've got the man advantage. You can think about trying to get the bomb plan in. Ariel still here in heaven. Slowly trying to come in from main. Back to a 2v2. The Glock just trying to see if he can get a bit of a tap. Get a little bit of information and see where Ariel is. Damn! That swing out to main. How instantly that connection is to a headshot. Oh, what a pistol round. Honestly, really, really sick pistol coming in for Hades. And it was just very simple. Just coming out from Squeak Door, being able to kind of look towards left side of default and look back in for main in case any of the CTs are just running through that smoke. And just take some jewels up to heaven, get the bomb plant, play it out, and just start relocating a lot onto the side. Allow him to take some really, really great um, advantages and great firefights and eventually just come away with a 4K. It's actually an upper fake, so they try and drive the util, try and see if they can scramble the CTs a little bit. X7's still holding out here from this ramp position. He's actually moved away now, so ramp's completely open. He can come back. AWP's not even needed. Sphinx is quicker to the kill. They could just drop lower. CT's on rotate already. And just keeping a line out towards the double doors, waiting for the swing, because you'll always imagine to yourself that when the CTs are in a 2 versus 4 on nuke, and they're not really in the best of retaking positions, someone might make a play. Like, someone's going to push forward, might want to try and just uh, deny the bomb from going down, being able to get a couple of kills. So, Hades just waiting for that that quick, that quicker um, notion. Um, and there it is. Straight away, Slowy knows 
If they get that bomb down and they're retaking, they're not going to win a two versus four. I've got to be able to strike in some sort of avenue. I'm going to take a fight immediately and just gets lost. Ooh, that was a pretty juicy second flick. Respect it. Respect it. Stand across smokes. Nothing really to it. Hades actually pretty much like behind the rest of the team. This is a really nice angle for Zori to just peek straight back in to look out from T-Red. That's an easy shot. Um, you've got the angle posted already. You're waiting for the peek. You're waiting for some sort of movement to happen outside. And Zori just peeked straight to the angle. Easy opening fight being won. Takes a little bit of damage from the molly, but just work with the man advantage. Start diving down lower. Deer gets the entry onto Ariel, and this round is pretty much over from here. Uh, X7 does get a kill. Something. They re-smoke off Squeak Door for the city side. Damn, that shit bringing this back. So, while all of the chaos is happening towards this lower bomb site, Hades is waiting for the rotate to come through from Squeak Door. But realizes he's got to actually pull his attention to lower because they keep losing these fights. Eventually, they trade out X7. 2v2. Planning open for decontamination. Trying to work with the sound cues. Scope in. Ooh. Not really sure what that first shot was for. Maybe to bait? I'm just thinking that because Hades took the shot, Disturbs thinks straight away, okay, I can open up a decon door and just get the instant trade back. Yeah, maybe that was just a bait. Try and, get, try and bait him in to, to just peek. And just play time. Like, no one is peeking here. Both teammates are low between Dia and Hades. So just play the clock. Look up towards observation. Good shot. Good 4k coming out for Hades. Well played. Hades actually with a pretty good spawn to go for like a squeaky pick. Or to go for something uh, slightly aggressive. And use that spawn. Go aggressive. It's not out towards squeaky. It's out to ramp. But anytime you've got a, a decent spawn for an ore bar, just try and see if you can work the opening the opening man advantage. Try and take a duel straight away. And that's what he does out to ramp. Deal with X7. And now they could just explode. They can go even further forward. Put a molly down out to hell. That means Zori can't do anything. Zori can't wide swing. Zori can't really look for any sort of way to get the trade back in. Ents have got the opening pick. And they've got ramp control. And it looks like they're just going back into an upper take now after their faked ramp. They get the closed vent molly to start out. Smoke down for main. Bomb gets dropped. They know that Slowey's playing up from the top of heart. Oh, tight shot to come in for the AWP up. <laughs> they just run forward of him. What is happening in this round? <laughs> and where is Zori? Zori's down in the vents. Is this going to be another 4k for Hades? No. Okay. But the trade comes in. Chaos. Absolute chaos coming down. And that's probably one of the first times we've actually seen Hades really in a close quarter situation. In one of those rounds where he has to deliver in the, the very close quarters and delivers well. Ends up getting a lot of kills. Sets himself up or sets his teammate up for the trade to end up winning out the ninth. Okay, this, this is what I'm talking about in terms of the, the change of pace. This time around, this is a lot more aggression coming through from Hades. Good shot onto the secret player. Looking back over out from the outside position. Might be able to catch off slowly if he does swing out slightly wide out from main. Depending on the info. Oh, even flicks back out towards that left-hand side. A great sequence to get a couple of opening kills. And that's the five on three just from the first 30 seconds of the round. Uh, he's just waiting for the vent dive, waiting for the CT to just dive out from Squeak. Now that that Lurk Smoke goes down, he's just going to spam through or at least burst up. Hope that you can catch a little bit of a connection. Now start focusing his attention towards outside. Notice as well the timing on that, okay? Even if the T side with a good spawn is running completely running outside, you're going past Silo, you're going to the back of T-Red, and you get to this position right here. Front of T-Red, just where Ariel comes out from. Notice how, even though Hades is playing up in heaven, and he's spamming that smoke, waiting for the vent dive, or in this, anticipating it, he comes back out, positions himself behind the generators outside, and still beats Ariel 
to the reposition. It all comes down to that internal clock. Realizing how quickly certain opponents can get to certain positions before you can. So he positions himself back in, make sure he's quicker to being in the right position at the right time. That internal clock is something that it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of experience at a very high level to develop and to understand. 16-5 to come in from Ants, and, and really, uh, that was just a... Uh... <laughs> I love it. I mean, the face honestly looks like the dog in his, uh, in his Steam picture. Bit of BM. Get that bomb defused. Get the victory over. Ents getting up to 16 of 5. And, and just a result. A really good result coming through. 32 kills and 11 deaths up for Hades. And just, uh, what a map, really. Um, that, that, was, that was something incredible. And... When you, when you look at that as a whole, you can see that the player this guy can really be. How versatile he can be in situations. Aggressive, passive, very much the, the guy that you can just rely on to be in the right positions at the right time. Never really makes bad decisions. Um, always got a lot of decision making behind his thought process. And just reliable so so many of those multi-kill rounds those 4ks i think we saw like three or four four k's over the course of that entire map and and hades is someone really special a, a player that i could look at and, and really see a, a bright and strong future coming through for ants and and hopefully it is hopefully their run uh continues moving forward again they won loot bet they've uh had a top eight uh top Eight finish in Funspark Season 2. The Funspark Playoffs, they won the entire event. They're now moving into the playoffs of Eliza Invitational. Uh, their next game is actually tomorrow, probably after this video gets played out against Mouse Sports in the uh, Gamers Without Borders charity event. So I'll be keen to maybe keep an eye out on that one. They've just moved up to 22nd in the world as well. And, uh, and yeah, uh, Hades is, is a guy that... Um, I'm sure would love your support. Um, check him out on Twitter. Um, great player. Uh, and really uh, sort of the, the, the duo of the Polish powerhouse that this team really needed moving forward. And um, I, I guess for any of the, the viewers at home that are watching this out on YouTube, in case you actually wanted to see the raw uncut footage, check out twitch.tv forward slash Dweg. This is where the demo review streams originally get um, displayed. Uh, they only get chipped up uh, in the YouTube video, so if you want to see the whole hour footage, the whole map footage, check me out there. Um, I don't know when the next video will be. Hopefully, we'll try and make it a fortnightly thing, if not a weekly thing, but until then, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.